Good evening, slave. We're now doing the long-awaited sequel to that you've been waiting for. Monkeypox is officially a public health emergency. We're about to bottle feed you the full details, which will put you into a fearful state, and then you'll be very suggestible to everything we say after that. We'll also be terrorizing you with updates on President Fully Protected Biden contracting COVID, the climate emergency, and how the World Economic Forum wants to block out the sun. Seriously. But first, let's start with the definitely not created in a lab this time, monkeypox. The World Health Organization has declared monkeypox a public health emergency. And the public has declared the World Health Organization a public health emergency. But the public doesn't control the narrative, so who cares? Here's what the head of the World Health Organization and Chinese Communist Party official Tedros something or other had to say. I have decided that the global monkeypox outbreak represents a public health emergency of international concern. Scary, I know, but it gets scarier. Now, who is being most affected by this hilarious sounding virus? Well, Dr. Peter McCullough, citing the New England Journal of Medicine, which does not sound very credible to us, shares that those who are infected by the dreaded global monkeypox emergency are 98% are gay or bisexual, 41% have concurrent HIV, and 95% of cases have been transmitted via sexual activity. And that's resulted in a staggering zero deaths. Um, can you cancel my weekend plans? Just tell the fellas something came up. As you can see, this is a public health emergency that affects us all. Your obedience to everything we tell you now and moving forward is the only way to protect yourself. However, there are those who suffer from a deficiency in obedience who are saying, another public health emergency that gives authoritarians complete control over our lives? This is like the boy who cried wolf. Well, it's actually not like that at all, because in that fairy tale, the boy who cried wolf was not a wolf himself. So this is very different. And in other news, President Brandon announced that he has COVID. Take a look. There's, you're okay. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna get COVID if you have these vaccinations. Oops, that's not the right clip. Hey folks, guess you heard this morning I tested positive for COVID. Following that announcement, the Babylon Bee reports that Joe Biden calls Obama to wish him a speedy recovery after hearing the president has COVID. With Hunter's dad being sick, one would expect the border problem, inflation, and food shortages that have been plaguing our country to start improving if the president's not working. But luckily, Brandon continues to work, even while having the dreaded infection. How's he doing that? Well, the White House doctor says, with all the problems the president is suffering from, this infection is the least of his concerns, and he probably won't even notice it. But the president is facing some criticism for continuing to work. As the woke will always cannibalize their own, Yale medical professor Kim Su has accused Biden of being a white supremacist for continuing to work while he has COVID. The university professor, who is someone you pay lots of money to to educate your children, said in a tweet, POTUS working while having COVID infection epitomizes white supremacy urgency in the workplace. But the White House responded by saying, that's not the thing that proves Biden's a white supremacist. However, Kim Su is someone who should be taken very seriously, given that the credentials of her pronouns are listed in her Twitter bio. We can also tell she is a principled person, unafraid to stick up for the truth that she stands for as she prevents unapproved people from following her account. And while we're on the topic, Unfortunately, Paul Duncan, a 35-year-old former NFL and Notre Dame lineman, has died after going into cardiac arrest while jogging around his neighborhood. After a string of similar deaths, there's no word yet on what caused him to go into cardiac arrest, but it was probably old age. Case closed. There will be no further comments on the matter. Moving along. If one virus doesn't kill you, then another will. And if that unfortunately still doesn't kill you, then the weather will. The climate crisis is here and it's real. That's why our narrative is chalked so full of it. And there's no need to worry because we want you to panic. And on the matter, President Biden recently announced climate change programs. But 
Consumers of propaganda are disappointed that he's yet to declare a climate emergency. And for those who are concerned that professional cyclist Joe Biden has yet to declare a climate emergency, don't worry, because that's on the next page in the playbook. Once declared, the climate emergency will help Americans have less food and more poverty while believing they're protected against the weather as they're living in despair. For more on this, don't check out the full breakdown on this video on the JP Reacts channel, linked in the description. To better understand the climate crisis and how it works, take a look at these weather update photos that prove how drastically the globe is warming. The top one is from June 21st, 2017, and the bottom one, with lower temperatures but featuring the color red, is from June 21st of this year. So as you can see, the colors we're now using on lower temperatures are much scarier looking. But is there anyone who can help us defeat the climate crisis? Yes! Oddly enough, the same people who create the narrative on it and go to painstaking measures to get it in front of you every chance they get also have a solution on it. It's our good friends and trusted allies at the World Economic Forum. The unelected reptiles at the World Economic Forum are pushing to block out the sun in an effort to defeat humanity in the name of the climate emergency. They're advocating for the use of space bubbles to block out some of the sun's rays. What could go wrong giving Klaus Schwab control over your ability to receive the life-giving light from the sun? Nothing, because Klaus Schwab himself reassures the public that there should be no risk. Sounds like a good thing to take at face value. You shouldn't worry about the risk if something goes wrong with his scheme to block out the sun. Should probably worry about the risk of it going according to plan. Hey, look at the weather in Antarctica today. We've got to do something about this. In our final story tonight, the Gateway Pundit reports that the city of Kalamazoo, Michigan is decriminalizing public urination, defecation, and littering for equity. And if you think about it, that implies that they think people of color are degenerate enough to want to pee and poop on sidewalks. And that's definitely not a racist perspective they have in their effort to destroy their city under the leadership of leftist Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Observational reports show that Governor Whitmer has an approximate IQ of 47, which Michigan leftists are proud of as it helps create equity for dumb people. That's it for tonight's news. Monkeypox is here, so don't do gay orgies quite as much. And please pray for President Brandon's recovery, but also be an atheist. And there's sun on the horizon for you with Klaus Schwab's dark cloud in the sky. Hmm, he's so literal with that. Fuck your freedom. Good night. Uh -huh.